Hey guys, Rory Van Vliet here with RVV BGJ and BGJconcepts.net and I'm going to talk to you guys today about developing a game plan for your Jiu Jitsu, specifically focusing on a guard or the guards that you need to develop together to be effective and to cover different ranges in case your opponent is able to force you into a situation that is less favorable for you, as well as talking about submissions. I'm not really an advocate of solo drilling because I don't think it's very enjoyable and you typically lose context of what you're doing within those movements. During this time where we're not training, I mean, obviously you should be looking after your conditioning, but I think this is a time that you're able to take a moment to write down what it is that your game is within Jiu Jitsu, as in what is your guard of choice? If you are a higher belt, what are the multiple guards of choice that you use? What are the passes you use? What are the submissions you use? Are they are you developing systems? How are they intersecting with each other so that you have something like the Kimura that ties in with the arm bar that can also tie in with the triangle? This is the stuff that the Danaher guys really emphasize and why they do so well at the highest level is because they have a game plan going in. And so whether you're just a hobbyist and you're wanting to just roll and have fun at the gym or you're actually looking at competing or you are a competitor, it's important to have that game plan so that when you get out there, you have yourself and your game mentally dialed in and you're ready to get out there and go. If you have to hesitate to think about what your next move is, then it's going to show on the mats and your opponent is potentially going to have that stuff figured out. And if they react and push a pace faster than you, then regardless of your conditioning or your skill in certain areas, if you're kind of just randomly throwing pieces at your opponent to try and put something together, then you're probably going to find at especially higher levels that you're not going to have success with that. The analogy that I use that makes sense to myself is the idea of writing a script before giving a speech. If you are to give a speech on a topic, you're presumably good at speaking English or whatever your native language is, and you're good at the topic that you're supposed to be talking about. Like say for me talking about this jujitsu stuff, I'm good at jujitsu. But if I don't write down a script first, like say the topic of this video, then all of a sudden when I start to try and speak to a camera or if I try and speak to a group of people, I'm going to start stuttering, stammering. I'm going to be freezing up. I'm going to be having a hard time. And so even though I am an expert in this topic, it's important for me to have that script down so that I don't get lost, so that I know exactly where I'm supposed to keep my thoughts focused on so I can keep that momentum moving. Same like if you're writing an essay, yeah, you might already know that topic, but what happens? You hit that writer's block as soon as you sit down and you try and type onto the computer about what that first sentence is, that opening statement for your story or for your essay or for your script, and you just sit there, shit, what do I write next? Those mental blocks, those hesitations will have the same effect going into our jujitsu, where if you don't know what your hand fighting sequence is going to be, what is going to be your number one guard that you're going to push towards, what is the submission or the position of your choice that you want to get to to dominate your opponent, you're going to hesitate. And so the thing that I want to talk about uh, first is guard, because guard is the most complicated area in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. There's many kinds of guards, there's many different ranges. And so let's first talk about what guard is. Guard is a range management device. That's the first and foremost thing that I want you guys to understand. It's our ability to use our legs to manage the distance between us and our opponent. And so with that, there are different ranges to guards. We have further range guards. We're going to be talking from like that aspect of the further distance that your opponent is away from you to when they're close to solidifying a pass or ending up right in side control. So that would be the two extremes of furthest to closest range. A furthest range or a further range guard, you're looking at some like, it could be seated technically because seated is going to be extremely far away. This is usually where you see leg lockers sitting down in competition and butt scooting over to their opponent from a very great distance. But that can also close into a very close range guard very quickly. So if we're looking at typically the longer range guards, we're looking at recumbent, <coughs> excuse me, or supine guards where we're off of our back. So we're looking at say something like spider guard. Then from spider guard, we're moving a bit closer. We're looking at then getting something like a Delahiva hook in against our opponent. Once our opponent gets rid of that Delahiva hook, we have to move a slight adjustment of our hip angle. We look to establish reverse Delahiva, slightly closer range. Then say our opponent starts to beat that and gets down into more of a kneeling position, getting closer to our hips. Then we're starting to move towards a version of half guard, many versions of half guard. And then we're looking at the closest range guard, which would be deep half. There's obviously a lot of other guards that we can fit within those ranges, but moving from furthest to closest, typically we're moving in like that kind of order. So first off, when you're first developing, I want you to pick a guard 
that's gonna be your number one focus. That's gonna help make your training more efficient and it's gonna allow you to maximize it because you're gonna be able to focus on one thing. I don't want you to try and play with a whole bunch of different guards, be crappy at all of them. I want you to pick one guard and get really good at it, even as a white belt. With the exception that I don't want you to work on close guard first, because I think close guard is too powerful with its clamping pressure to hold somebody in place, to use it as a safety net to save yourself in rounds, especially when you're tired or when you're trying not to get tapped by higher belts. It shuts down movement. And with that, you're gonna be slowing down the development of your guard retention, the de development of your training partner's guard passing, and it's gonna be just a crutch that you're gonna hold on to that I think is gonna be kind of detrimental to your development in your guard work. I have a longer video on that topic with uh, Stefan Kesting that I did on my YouTube channel, RVB BGG. So if you're interested in a little bit more of that context, then check that out. But pick an open guard. So with that in mind, what kind of guard should you pick? It's really up to you. I recommend at the beginning that you pick a guard if you're interested in playing gi and no gi, which you should be. I think it's really important to be training both of those. And if you like jujitsu and it's fun, then I mean, having that variety is awesome training something that will work in gi and no gi. So if you pick something like say collar sleeve or spider guard, there's nothing wrong with those guards, they're extremely effective. But as soon as you're, uh, you've lost that piece of equipment on you, that gi, and you try and roll no gi, all of a sudden now your game plan's out the window. And that's something that can really affect people and it's a reason why I think some people start to not like no gi once they've trained gi for so long is because it really sucks from an ego standpoint to have a confidence in your ability and then all of a sudden start from scratch and to have lost that confidence because you don't know what to do. Something like butterfly guard or single leg X, X guard, Della Hiva, those guards can be played regardless of the clothing that you and your training partner are wearing. You want to start developing that guard and you want to think about it in a few ways. We're not looking at submissions right at the very beginning. I know that's the fun part and you guys have probably already stopped paying attention to this video just for me saying that but submissions are the least important thing. When you're first learning Jiu Jitsu, it's extremely important that you learn how to first control your body, then learn how to control your opponent's body, and then, only then, start to look at how you'd submit them from there. So when you first start developing a guard, like say if we look at Deli Hiva, I want you to first work on how that control scheme works, how you're gonna cause these movements to create vulnerability within your opponent's alignment, Kazushi's where you're off balancing them, affecting their base. You get comfortable with that, then I want you to start working on ways that you can also hit some sweeps from there. How are you gonna change stuff together? I don't care about the submissions that you're gonna try and hit from that guard, but I want you to look at ways of being offensive using sweeps. Then working on ways to enter that position. I like to work the guard first and teach the guard first rather than working on the entries because if you don't know what to do, from that position, why would I even bother showing you how to get there? As white belts and blue belts, and certainly at the higher levels, you will naturally find ways or even accidentally fall into these certain positions if you are looking for them. So it's important that you guys know how to play Dele Hiva and how to do some stuff from Dele Hiva before you even work on how to get to Dele Hiva. Then also exit strategies. Any position that you've worked on, you should have a way to bail out on it or at least understand those range battles that are happening that when someone starts to beat your Dele Hiva, you're able to fall back to a closer range guard out of necessity or you're able to just recognize what's going on, bail, push them away and start playing Dele Hiva again or even playing a further range guard. You don't want to hold on to something with death grips until it's too late and then end up just waiting or even pulling your opponent past your guard. So. fucking motorcycles. If you're a higher belt, hopefully you've already picked a guard where if I say, pick, tell me the guard of your choice, your favorite guard, first thing that you go to, you shouldn't even hesitate. It should just be single leg X. That's for me. Single leg X is my preferred guard. I love it. It's been something that I've just always worked on from uh, a white belt and it's something that works gi and no gi. And it also translates well to other guards. So if you already have a guard that you've chosen, now we wanna start looking at how do we develop a system with that? How do you start, what guards start to work with that other guard really well? So for me, being single leg X, I have to work on my butterfly and seated guard. I need to know how to be able to enter and get myself underneath my opponent's hips and occupy and control the inside space between their legs so that I'm able to actually get myself into single leg X and X guard, which would be the other guard. So for me, my three guards are butterfly guard, single leg X, and X guard. They work extremely well together. Most This is what a lot of no-gi guys work on, especially when they're focusing on leg locks. It's pretty understood that if you want to have a single leg or an X-guard game, you have to have the other side of that, which would be single leg 
X and X guard together works super well. Butterfly is a great way of being able to enter that. So there's three guards for me that I was working on. How do I always connect these and how do I fall back to other ones and chain this stuff? And this is like, if I was to have a competitive role with somebody, if I'm trying to bring my A game into a competition, that's where I'm gonna be going to. And so my emphasis when I'm looking at my grip battling and battling from other guard ranges, how do I push everything back or funnel everything back into my A game? That's what we want to be focusing on. It's, it's great and it's fun to be able to just play around and kind of do whatever the hell you want without a plan. But in order to maximize our efficiency and our effectiveness, we do have to have a plan and we need to try and impose that on our opponent. So now the other side of that is not just working guards that are connected to each other, but now once again, looking at all the different ranges. You do not have to be an expert at all the ranges, but you're gonna have to have skills at all those levels to be able to defend and funnel people back into your game at the specific ranges. So for me, I developed Butterfly Guard, Single Leg X, and X Guard. That was usually always done from a seated position where I could move in on my opponent when I'm very mobile with my hips and pull underneath. However, if they forced me onto my back and made me play a guard that I, was, I preferenced less, that I trained less, then I was having a real difficult time. This is inevitable when you're first developing because you're not an expert in all these different areas, but it's gonna start showing holes in your game where if someone can force you onto your back and force you to play a supine guard like De La Hiva, then all of a sudden you're screwed. If someone can force you into half guard, which a lot of people like to pass from a half guard position and you haven't worked on that, but you're a killer at butterfly guard, you're gonna get smashed. And then deep half guard, very difficult guard to play, but if you don't know how to use that range, then you've lost on another very valuable, valuable range that you can use to be able to stop a guard pass at the very last stage. But also because it's the closest range guard, it's the first guard that we're able to get back to the easiest when we're escaping bad positions, like say something like side control or full mount. It's much easier to pull somebody into a deep half guard position and then get back to further range guards than it is to say, try and establish spider guard from a uh, full mount when you're on bottom. This is something that's extremely important to work on at all times, but especially right now when we're cooped up in our house and we're kind of going stir crazy, starting to write this stuff down in whatever way makes most sense to you. I'm a pen and paper guy, so I like to write it down like that, but on the computer or whatever makes most sense, start writing down the guards that you prefer, that you like to work on, or even if it's just one guard that you work on, but look at now the different ranges. Looking at a guard from a seated position so you can do a butterfly guard against a kneeling opponent or somebody who's standing. Then supine guard when you're on your back so that if you're forced into something where somebody has put you on your back when you're trying to play butterfly guard, they've even penetrated between your legs with their lead leg to start guard passing. Do we have a Delahiva or a reverse Delahiva or a Mantis guard or a worm guard or something that you can work on that you can be offensive from there to sweep people? or to push them back so that then you're able to get back into a seated position. That's how, for me, I developed Mantis Guard. I developed Mantis Guard so then how can I be aggressive off my back, first to be able to control them, but then also be able to funnel them back into Butterfly Guard or Single Leg X or X Guard. And then eventually I started really getting good at sweeps and even some submission threats from there, where it's like, okay, now I can actually look at back takes. And it's become a preferred guard of mine over time, but I first developed it just out of necessity to cover my ass within that range. Then, reverse Delahiva. I'm not a reverse Delahiva player, but I know how to control it. I know how to off balance my opponent and threaten them. I know a couple sweeps, but what I'm really good at is being able to push them back so that I can get back to either my Mantis or Delahiva guard, or even getting underneath them and starting to get back into the link lock entanglements, getting into like X guard and single leg X as well. Then half guard. Half guard is a guard that I really enjoy as well, but half guard and especially deep half guard were not guards that I choose to play and still aren't if I was to go up against someone really good. I've developed that just out of the necessity of can I control my opponent from there, keep them back, funnel them back into the further range guards that I need so that I can play my game, but I'm definitely no slouch there. That's just something that as you go through the different levels of belts, you should be developing those skills in those areas so that you're able to be effective here because that is what you're gonna deal with against a high level person. They are gonna know or they are gonna find a way to play against your weaknesses. As uh, Paul Schreiner had, uh, was the first one that kind of stated the idea that you want to pass the guard that your opponent doesn't preference. And so when we're looking at a seated and a recumbent supine guard when someone's on their back, if someone starts seated in front of me, I know that they want to play seated, obviously. So if I, my main goal from there to pass them should be to throw them on their back. 
if they don't have skills from there, now I'm gonna have a much easier time passing. Same, if somebody is on their back and they're trying to play like some Worm Guard stuff or some Dela Hiva, I can try and pass from there. But depending on the distance between us, I might be able to control the ankles and maybe I try and shove uh, their legs underneath me to force butterfly hooks because I know that they're potentially not as comfortable playing butterfly guard because they're choosing to start off their back and play this recumbent, more uh, relaxed guard. And so if you haven't developed the skills in those areas, a guard passer will take advantage of you, they will exploit those weaknesses and you will get your guard passed. And so obviously it's a lot to work on. Pick a guard of your choosing that you're interested in. That's the most important thing. Like I can tell you what kind of guards I think are useful for you to work on, like Dela Hiva or Butterfly Guard or Half Guard is a safe bet always because you have to develop a skill from there. But ultimately, if you're not passionate about it, <clears throat> it's not gonna be something that you're gonna work on. The main, the most important thing is that Jiu Jitsu is fun. And so while I say train something that is gonna work in Gi and no Gi, cause then that's an efficient use of your time and it's gonna be something that you're gonna be able to take with you and then eventually start branching out into more Gi specific stuff. If you're really interested in collar and sleeve or if that's what you've been already working on for the last year or two, that is not time wasted. Keep focusing on that. And then just start to think of if you are interested in no Gi or what, whatever the reasoning is for your jiu-jitsu training, then start to think of ways that you can start to incorporate a kind of guard into the gi, or start thinking about maybe your next guard being something that can incorporate into both of those. But think about the guards and the systems that connect together. So obviously you have spider guard that works really well with lasso. You have Dela Hiva that works really well with reverse Dela Hiva or within that range, I mean, you could also connect spider guard or even worm guard. Closed guard, I would say you could also connect with Dela Hiva in the sense that if you're working closed guard, even though it's not a guard that I would recommend working on at first, it's very common for you guys to have done it, Dela Hiva is going to be a great one because someone is going to be standing moving into you, so you're probably going to have to deal with a standing opponent. Using Dela Hiva and finding a way to use Dela Hiva to pull them into closed guard or to be able to sweep them from there, and then if they do get into your closed guard, great. But then also more importantly, when they start standing up and inevitably will look to break your closed guard at some point, you want to break the guard on your terms. If you wait for them to open your legs up themselves, then they're already starting this range. They're ahead on this range battle of passing your guard. And now you're being reactive rather than proactive and being on the, off, uh, on the offense. So as soon as they start standing up, being able to just open your legs and immediately move right into Dela Hiva, it's going to be a guard that works really well with close guard. Butterfly guard, single leg X and X guard tie in really well together. Half guard can tie in with uh, numerous things. It also depends on the kind of half guard you're playing. It can be more of a Z guard or it can be the half guard shell. I do not recommend playing just like a, a deep kind of like uh, like the old school kind of style of half guard where you just triangle your legs together because you don't have proper frames between your, you and your opponent, but that's just my opinion. And then deep half guard, there's really just one main way of playing that, but, and it's also very difficult to be able to sweep somebody. Once again, just one thing that I want you to think about is the range in which that guard you're picking from. If you pick, say, deep half guard as your first guard to learn from, understand that that is the closest range guard, and that means that is one step away from your opponent passing your guard. And so I would not recommend something like deep half guard either right at the very beginning because you're gonna find that there is a bunch of battles that you're giving up purposely to get to deep half, which there's nothing wrong with when you're high level at that skill and you can force that game plan. But as a beginner developing, I think it could be quite difficult. And then when you fail at deep half, you get your guard passed. Where if you worked on something like say Dela Hiva first, you have a guard that you're establishing when your opponent's still quite far away from you. And then when they start to get past that Dela Hiva, you're gonna start developing other ranges. So even if you have nothing else but a half guard, at least when Dela Hiva fails and they're trying to knee cut, then you're gonna be able to start working on ways to funnel them into half guard, control them from there, push them back to more of an open guard where you can put your feet on them, and then hopefully reestablish Dela Hiva. So like deep half, you're looking at basically either sweeping your opponent or getting your guard passed. So until you're better, I would also recommend keeping deep half for a later date.